Thank you, David. And uh, thank you, everybody. I want to just say, like with, with everyone else, how honoured I am to join this marvellous academy. Uh, this afternoon has just been exhilarating. And um, also thank Tony Baston, my nominator, uh, very much for suggesting uh, the, or proposing me. Um, let me just make sure I can do this. So um, my history uh, is as a molecular biologist. I was um, privileged to start my PhD in 1972 in Melbourne at the same year the first uh, gene cloning experiments were being reported out of California. I grew up with the molecular biology revolution, uh, first at Monash University and then for several years at the Texas Medical Center in Houston. Marvelous experience, the biggest medical center in the world by far. I came back um, in 1982 to join CSIRO in North Ryde, the new division of molecular biology. And they said to me, John, you know how to clone genes. Um, uh, we want you to make recombinant vaccines. So in terms of my path uh, to this academy, that was the first contribution that I made. Although perhaps before I, I uh, move into that, I'd just say some of you would be aware that my major passion scientifically has been to uh, explore the proposition that most of the human genome is not junk and in fact is a uh, alternative information system was just not expected by the mechanical zeitgeist that ruled the world in the 1950s and 60s. We're talking about increasingly rapid uh, uh, progressions from conceptual advance to practical applications and molecular biology begins its life in 1953 with the double helix and, and now is actually in the clinic and I'll show you how and what we're doing to, to, to do that. So my first contribution to the field was uh, at CSR, a development of a genetically engineered vaccine against ovine foot rot, and this was the scientific publication that showed that we could actually clone and express protective antigens for the bacterial organism that caused, uh, caused foot rot in, in another bacteria that was easy to culture. We went on to work with, uh, with Arthur Webster Proprietary Limited and Biotechnology Australia Limited to commercialise this vaccine. Uh, which is uh, still still used and in fact was credited with uh, eradicating foot rot from Nepal of all places by an ACIR uh, uh, program. Now my only mistake at this point in my career was to uh, make a vaccine against foot rot instead of uh, uh, papillomavirus in humans. <laughs> a career limiting move uh, but, but it was great fun and I and I must say, I, I, I enjoy those years in CSR very much because it's just a, a wonderful organisation that's dedicated to connecting uh, knowledge and technology to outputs. Um, for my sins uh, there, I was offered uh, the uh, Foundation Chair of Molecular Biology at the University of Queensland in the late 1980s and um, was sufficiently impressed uh, and never disappointed in the, with the leadership of the University of Queensland. Paul Greenfield's here and Paul was with me uh, either as colleague as my boss for all of my 24 years at the University of Queensland. Um, we took a fledgling Centre for Molecular Biology and Biotechnology in conjunction with uh, Professor Peter Andrews, a fellow of this academy, and uh, who uh, we joined his Centre for Drug Design and Development with my Centre for Molecular and Cellular Biology to form the Institute for Molecular Bioscience. And that's a picture of this magnificent building. This was the first of the new institutes in Brisbane and it set the set the protocol uh, for doing so. And I was uh, again privileged to be invited by Premier Beattie, who was one of my supporters for this, uh, fe for this uh, fellowship, um, to address the cabinet. And I remember saying to him, uh, we sometimes talk about it, I said, look, you know, this, this uh, new science of molecular biology uh, uh, you know, is unraveling, exposing what's different, is different between you and me and what's different between a lime and a lemon. I said, it's magnificent science, front cover of Time magazine, Human Genome Project. But the important thing is that whoever generates and uses this information is going to transform all of the biologically based industries, agriculture, medicine, natural products, the environment. It's more than half of the world's economy and it's the most important uh, part of the world's economy. So um, I, I developed uh, uh, the triple leverage strategy, which was a third from the university, a third from our state, and a third from the feds if you could get it, or from donors, and that not only led to the funding of this wonderful institute, and Peter, Premier Beattie gave me an, almost another $80 million to help uh, core funding, but also was a prototype for the Australian Institute of Biomaterials and Technology that Mark referred to, and Peter Gray's here, of course, 
uh, but also the Australian uh, the Queensland Bio, uh, Brain Institute, uh, the Institute of Health and Biomedical Innovation, etc. at um, at uh, QT and others at Griffith elsewhere. Um, uh, I went back to the lab with an Australian Federation, uh, ARC Federation Fellowship because I, I felt that I'd done my job in building that and I said to uh, Paul Greenfield at the time, Paul, I said, I've got three jobs. I've got an institute of several hundred people. I've got research. Uh, I think I've seen something nobody else has about the way the human genome is constructed and I'm not going to die wondering. And I've got a family and I think I can do any two of those three jobs well. So I went back uh, to the lab for eight years with ARC Federation then NHMRC Australia Fellowship, very lucky and then was tempted to come down here to Sydney to the Garvin Institute uh, and I uh, accepted that temptation on the condition that colleagues and the board accepted that I was going to turn this into the first of the next generation institutes that put bioinformatics and data at the centre of the research endeavour, not at the end of the corridor. We were very lucky to get philanthropic funding. We established the Centre for Clinical Genomics and, we, uh, and in 2014 we became one of the first three centres in the world to actually uh, obtain the equipment to sequence human genomes for $1,000 US. That was down from a billion dollars uh, 15 years earlier. And we've now sequenced uh, over 16,000 human uh, genomes and we've got a large group of over 70 people, not just technicians, informaticians, but also software engineers, etc. And we've developed software which is being trialled throughout the hospital systems in the United Kingdom, Japan uh, and Australia. And also we've just licensed one of the biggest HMOs in the United States in terms of actually integrating clinical data with uh, genomic data. Uh, to, to translate this effectively into, uh, into we've, um, we've uh, established a company called Genome.1. Uh, that's, uh, that's its URL, so if you've got nothing better to do later, just type in Genome.1 you'll see this marvellous company that we've established, which is, doing, uh, which is revolutionising diagnosis of genetic disease. We can actually diagnose now 60% of all undiagnosed serious genetic disease straight up. And in a trial program with people with chronic but undiagnosed diseases, we're now actually diagnosing the genetic causes of 30% of those straight up. Uh, which leads me on to my final point, which is, and, and perhaps uh, mission in life now, is the transformation of the healthcare system through genomics. There is no doubt that every aspect of our biology, including our susceptibility to disease, including, including our susceptibility to infectious disease, is actually genetically uh, influ determined or, or at least influenced often with uh, environmental factors compounding, of course. So uh, over the next 20 years, we're going to see one of the biggest revolutions, I think, in uh, uh, scientific, medical and social history, where we go from medicine and health being the last of the great cottage industries on this planet to the most important of the data-intensive industries on in this planet. Everybody's genome will be sequenced and will be incorporated into their medical records and their healthcare plans as well as into the better management efficiency and effectiveness of the healthcare system. So we're building that environment, uh, database scaling to millions of genomes, the software, etc. And while I think this should transform to the national level in the public good, this is a prototype and in, we've just released a product where anybody in this audience or anywhere else can have their genome sequenced and we'll advise you on your cardiovascular risk, cancer risk. Uh, and risk for uh, adverse drug reactions, etc. And we just published the last thing I'll say, but just as a taste uh, with the National Cancer Institute in the United States, that we can now predict cancer with very high accuracy. And when we do that from genetic information and give people a scan, one in 10 of those people actually had cancers, pre symptomatic cancers they were not aware of uh, at the time when surgery is effective. So I'm uh, thrilled to be here. I think this is an exhilarating uh, academy. and. Um, I hope that I can contribute not only to making Australia a leader in both the uh, social benefits but also the economic benefits of a revolution in healthcare, but also to advancing the objectives of this academy because, uh, as you know, I've had a fair bit of experience and it's all yours now. So thank you. <laughs>